Good morning, family. Uh, Watch Woman 65, Lisa Boyce here. Uh, first, I want to thank the new subscribers. And like I said, when you subscribe to this channel, you're no longer subscribers, you're family. I want to give a shout out to Barry Scarborough, Greg Jackson, and Tim Henderson because uh, not only do they have awesome channels, but they help me get this started. And without the Lord guiding them to do that, I wouldn't be doing these videos. As you can tell, I'm kind of under the weather, yeah, but I'm okay. I think Zach picked up something from school. Either Zach or Cody picked up something from school and gave it to me. Because it bypassed them and came right to me. Zach had it for a while, but then he don't have it no more. Um, thank you for the comments on the hat. <laughs> I have the matching gloves with the hat, too. Um, I want you to know that you are prayed for. You are loved and I pray God's blessing over you every day. I want to start this off and I'm going to read something out of Acts, or not Acts, Romans. And I'm going to start with the 27th verse. It's Romans 1, starting with the 27th. Well, let's go with the 26th verse. Why not? It's pertaining to what we're going to be talking about today. For this cause, God gave them up into vile affections, for even their women did exchange, did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lusts one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of the of their error, which was meat. In other words, which was due. They're going to receive the penalty, which is due. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of every evil thing, disobedient to parents without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, they which commit such things are worthy of death. Not only do the same, but have pleasure in them, in them that do them. I think a lot of people forgot that verse. You can't condone a wicked lifestyle and claim to be saved and claim to be Christ, followers of Christ. And that's what the churches are doing. That's what a lot of the churches are doing. They're claiming to be, well, we're embracing them. Instead of addressing the problem, they're embracing the problem. And this is where a lot of things start. Right there. What I read was a list of what goes on when we let this go in the church. This is running rampant in the church and the problem is the homosexual community is winning. They're winning with this. Now we're gonna talk about who this is affecting, what denominations are involved in this. Besides the Methodists, the Lutherans, the Baptists are involved in this. The American Baptist Church USA. Now they might say, well, they're not the same as the uh, Missionary Baptist Church or the Southern Baptist Church or the uh, 
independent Baptist church. They're different. They're branch off different. That might be true, but they're still related to the Baptist. OK, I'm going to give you a little bit of history about the American Baptist Church USA. And I'm going to tell you what they condone. When I read this, I was shocked. I was utterly shocked because literally the pastors in the pulpits and the false teachers are, like I said, they're embracing sin. Instead of preaching against it and not preaching grace, they're embracing sin because they feel that they can't do anything else about it. So in other words, they're not trusting Christ to take care of it. They're not trusting in the grace of the gospel. They're just not mentioning it and they're condoning it and they're embracing it. And you wonder why everything is happening like it happens. If I'm not mistaken, in Genesis, God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah for this very reason. For this very reason, the Sodomites. Women exchanging natural affections for unnatural affections for each other. Men doing the same thing. What makes you think God's not going to do the same thing here? He's going to destroy this nation. And my advice to you all is to get saved. Talk to anybody who's not saved and tell them the hammer's about to fall. Because God is fed up. And when I read this, I can see why. I am too. The American Baptist Church, the American Baptist Church, traces its history's history in the U.S. to the founding of the first Baptist Church in America by Roger Williams in Rhode Island in 1930, 1638. Through the years, various Baptist associations were formed in the colonies and the states to advance the cause of education and missions. In 1814, the Triennial Convention, a national Baptist body, was formed and later named the American Baptist Foreign Mission Society. Slavery became an issue in the church in the years leading up to the American Civil War. In 1845, the American Baptist Foreign Mission Society ruled it would no longer appoint missionaries who were slaveholders. That's a hawk in case you didn't uh, hear that. The same year, the American Baptist Home Mission Society divided into separate northern and southern conventions. The group of churches in the south became the Southern Baptist Convention. In 1907, the Northern Baptist Convention was organized. And in 1950, their name was changed to the American Baptist Convention. The name changed again in 1972 to American Baptist Convention. Churches USA. The American Baptist Church USA places a strong emphasis on social justice and community involvement. How nice of them. The denomination's mission statement says our commitment to Jesus propels us to, to nurture authentic relationships with one another. Build healthy churches transform our communities, our nations, our world. Engage every member in hands-on ministry and speak the prophetic word of love. Our vision for Mission Energize is a multitude of serv uh, servant missionaries of social justice, healing, peacemaking, economic development, and education. Empowered by the Holy Spirit, we work together in mutual submission, humility, love, and giving that the gospel might be preached and lived in all the world. This is from their website. Let me tell you what they practice. 
It might sound a little bit different. Doctrine and practice within individual American Baptist churches can vary widely. Some are more evangelical. Some are more charismatic. Some ordain women as clergy. And some ordain homosexual clergy. Can you believe that? Not only do some ordain homosexual clergy, they perform homosexual weddings. The issue of homosexuality within a church has led some American Baptist churches to have to leave the denomination recently. Wow. I wonder why. The American Baptist Church USA takes no official position on abortion, leaving the issue up to personal choice. It's your choice whether or not you want to kill your baby. And the church will allow you to do that if you choose to do so. How pathetic is that? Really? The American Baptist Churches USA are also known for practicing open communion, open membership, and promoting ecumenical and interfaith cooperation. Wow. You see how this is infiltrated in the church? See, I started this series. I started going back, and the Lord just kept taking me back to these different denominations. Number one, denominations aren't in the Bible. Denominations are man-made. Number two, you see how they have allowed this to creep in and creep in the members and make everybody think, make you think that it's okay to allow to happen. No wonder so many people are confused. This is why so many people are confused. And quite frankly, a lot of the unsaved and a lot of the atheists, they don't want nothing to do with this. It's all, I always said, it's within the church and it starts in the pulpit. Whoever thought that this was okay for, for it to creep in of all places, the Baptists, is just shocking. Now, there's another form of Baptist, too. It's called the Association of Welcoming and Affirming Baptists. The Association of Welcoming and Affirming Baptists. Listen to this. This is off their website. The Association of Welcoming and Affirming Baptists, AWAB, <laughs> A-W-A-B, is a group of consisting of Baptist individuals, organizations, and congregations that are committed to advocating and encouraging the full inclusion of lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender persons in the lives and ministries of Baptist churches. Folks, this thing is wide open. And what's happened is that the homosexual agenda has gone into the church has infiltrated the church. And the members are thinking, even Christians are thinking, oh, it's okay. It's okay. No, it's not. It is not okay. The Bible says in, in Romans, even if you condone this behavior, you're just as bad as they are. And the churches are condoning this. They are condoning this. So basically they're saying that Basically, they're saying that we condone this and it's okay. AWAB was established by uh, AWAB was established by about ten congregations in 1993 during the year of the American Baptist Churches Biennial in San Jose, California. It grew out of a group called American Baptist Concern for Sexual Minorities, which was founded in 1972 and which merged with the Association of Welcoming and Affirming Baptists in 2003. As of 2012, AWAB <laughs> 
had 76 member congregations. These congregations are affiliated with the American Baptist Churches USA, the Baptist Peace Fellowship of North America, the Alliance of Baptists, the Cooperative Baptist Fellowship, and the United Church of Christ. Wow, I just did something on them about a month ago. I think I, I, think I should do something else. Informal Partners of Ameri Association of Welcoming and Affirming Baptists include Roger Williams Fellowship, the Coalition for Baptist Principles, and Baptists Without Borders. In addition to the member congregation and informal partner organization, AWAB, AWAB, has a number of local affiliated groups, member organizations, one member seminary, and thousands of friends around the world beyond Baptist circles. AWAB cooperates incumenically, I can't say that right, with welcoming and affirming organizations in other Christian denominations and faith traditions. AWAB is a partner in the Institute of Welcoming Resources and, publish, and publishes an electronic newsletter, letter. Welcoming Spirit is their newsletter. They're welcoming Satan in their newsletter. That's the Welcoming Spirit. They're welcoming Satan. The national offices of AWAB are in Kenningston, Maryland. There you have it. There you have it. I'm going to read this again. I'm going to read this one more time. That lifestyle is not welcome. I'm not knocking homosexuals. I'm not knocking you as an individual. I'm knocking the sin. Okay? There's no way you can be gay or lesbian or transgender and call yourself a Christian. You have got to renounce that. That is wrong. God hates it. He doesn't hate you, but he hates that sin. I'm sorry, it's right here in the Bible. It's right here in Romans 1. And I don't think people really realize what this verse is saying. Because the people, and I'm gonna read this last verse again. This very last verse, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them, but have pleasure in them that do them. In other words, instead of telling people about this, they're condoning it and embracing it. I understand you love the individual, but hate to sin. But to get down to brass tactics of it, you have got to consult them with this. Because there is no such thing as a gay Christian. You have to come out of that lifestyle. I'm just telling you like it is. God destroyed a whole city because of it. And if he did it back then, he's going to do the same thing now. Barry Scarborough last night mentioned that dream of excrement and the dreams that he had of the overflowing toilets, I had two of them. And I didn't say anything. I had two of those dreams about a month ago. That's the filth. He told me to, and I had to listen to that. That's the filth that's coming up into the nostrils of the Lord himself. When I had that dream, the filth that was overflowing in that toilet, it had eyes. It had literal eyes to it. And all I could do was stand back and look. And it was overflowing. It was coming out. This is the filth that's going up to the nostrils of God. And yet the Baptist churches and a lot of other these so-called churches are condoning this. It's really aggravating. Because we're trying to get people saved by the gospel of grace. You have people out there that is condoning homosexuality and saying that it's okay to have an abortion. It's your personal choice. Instead of saying no. 
Oh, to the point where in the Colosseum, they put up a, a image of Molech. Wasn't he the one who, back in the Bible, people gave their babies to and threw them in the fire? That's the spirit of abortion. But yet, you got this so-called institution that's telling people, oh, it's okay to murder your children. It's a personal choice. Before I got saved, I had an abortion. That was the worst time of my life. It was horrible. But yet, you got people like this, and I ministered to other women after I got saved and talked them into putting their child up for adoption. You got people like this, this welcoming and affirming Baptist and the American Baptist telling people it's a personal choice. It's a personal choice. We will welcome you as a gay person. We will even perform your gay marriage. It's a personal choice when you want to have an abortion. Really? And you call yourself a church of God? No. No. This is what's out there. I'm letting you know what's out there. I'm telling you that there are people out there. Satan is running rampant as we speak. And if it takes me to awaken him, and get him out and let you know what to look out for, that's what I'll do. Even if it takes me being on my deathbed to live as Christ, to die as gain. This has got to be known out there. This is what's out there. Your underlying pastors, this is what this is what their denomination is. Denomin this is the common denominator. It's false, it's vile, and it's coming up in the nostrils of God. It's already there. If you know anybody who's associated with anything like that, tell them to get out of that. Because it's not from God, in the least bit. I don't care how much community service they do or try to tell you a back way to the gospel. They don't know the gospel, nor do they want to know the gospel. You know why? They're too busy getting donations from the LGBT elemental PQ community. That's why. And as long as they're condoning this, they're going to keep getting money from them. Like I said, the gospel of grace is rare. It's not popular. It's not popular at all. These people will burn. Can they change? Sure they can change. Will they? Probably not. Because they'll lose millions. Now I got riled up. I feel better now. Thank you. I will be on tomorrow with more. Or probably later on today. I have to continue doing research on this. This is part of witchcraft. This is part of rebellion. That's infiltrating in the church, through the pulpit, through the members. Folks, it is grace through faith in Christ alone. You can come to him as a homosexual. And once you accept the gospel of grace through faith in Christ alone, I guarantee you the Holy Spirit will convict you of righteousness and lead you on a path straight to heaven. I promise that. It's easy to get saved. God has made it simple. It's simple, but it didn't come easy. It didn't come cheap. But the minute you reject that gift of grace and trample it under feet, and throw it back in God's face and say that I can do it on my own. That's when you go to hell. Accept the gospel of grace. It is grace through faith in Christ alone, period.
No strings attached. Period. Thank you. Have a good day.